Okay. Good morning. Great to see you all. Um, today we are going to be covering our our east and our west facet. So we have a lot to get through, and we'll I'm going to hopefully leave some space at the end that we can put it all together in some practical ways and have some more questions. Um, and again, feel free to come 15 minutes early next time to do some more questions. That's what we were doing. Good good times. Um, so let's just get started. How about okay? And I'll and then we'll do some questions after. So I'm gonna just go to that. Okay. So we uh I'm gonna turn my this is the tricky part. In order to see things, I have to turn the chat or I have to close those things so I can see the screen. So feel free to um yeah, get my attention if you have a question. Okay, <clears throat> so we're doing Innocent Sage Trickster Fool of the East and our Dark Muse Beloved on the West. So just to remind everyone that things, that we are more familiar with certain aspect of our wholeness, um, often our nurturing generative adult, we can get more of a grasp on and some of the others become a little more elusive. At first, I couldn't even talk about the West really. Um, at first, I just thought, I don't even, I don't get it. So, so I will try to really um, let you know what I've learned about it. But again, because the South and the West are not developed in our culture, they tend to be um, harder for us to recognize, but they are there. So, um, whoops. So let's, um, yeah, let's start. Okay. So again, we've got our map. The outside is our whole self. The inside is our fragmented selves. I also kind of wanted to mention that, um, so let's say we're really strong in our nurturing generative adult, but not developed anywhere else. That doesn't make us in our whole self all the time because it's not. It's helpful to separate in the map so we can get um, a sense of it. But in reality, we wanna be accessing the whole container. Otherwise we get, uh, we're unbalanced in that. So, and you'll see as we go through um, this, how that works, especially because as we move to the East, which we're going to do, we can be way, um, lots of people are potentially kind of strong in the East and it can throw you off balance and really lead to a, a life of bypassing. So we don't want to just be in one place. Okay, so let's go into our whole self. I want to read this poem because it's really East. Mary Oliver, um, this is speaks to our East facet. Every day I see or hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in the haystack of light. It was what I, it was what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world, to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. Nor am I talking about the exceptional, the fearful, the dreadful, the very extravagant, but of the ordinary, the common, the very drab, the daily presentations. Oh, good scholar, I say to myself, how can you help but grow wise with such teachings as these? The untrimmable light of the world, the ocean's shine, the prayers that are made out of grass. So welcome to the East. Just gonna move this here. Um, so I've got some pictures here that can maybe help you. The East, we might also call our wise self. Um, Bill uses the innocent sage trickster, sacred fool, um, which we'll kind of go through a bit. But this part of us helps us see the big picture of our lives, how everything fits together. My um, being for this side of me is Eagle, who has that over, you know, who has that big view, big capacity, but different than escaping, which we'll go through in our, um, in the inner circle. It's not something that takes us up and out, but something that, that can really see the big picture of everything can see the big picture of how my life works together, helps me not get stuck on this little, you know, the place I might be in or this thing that's happening right now it has this capacity to really hold the whole, to see the whole thing. Um, 
it gives us our aha moments. So sometimes I think of this part of me too, as the, the trickster is a great image because it, it can trick you into finding things out about yourself that you hadn't intended to discover. <laughs> so when you have that, you know, I, I say about myself, there's times where I, I can't unsee something. Now you've seen it and you just can't unsee it. That's, that's my East, whether it's about me or some dynamic I'm in, I can't unsee it. You know, it's now clear to me. Um, which maybe is one of our C's that would apply to this is it's clarity. It can really see. So, um, and then it lets me know. And then I, I see, and I can't unsee it. <laughs> um, it's also my playful side that helps me take myself not too seriously. There's a story of the uh, Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu when they first met each other, that they just uh, tickled each other and giggled. And I mean, I don't know how old they were, but um, old. And the fact that they didn't take themselves all that seriously, you know, it's kind of, it's this invitation to be both wise and innocent and not, you know, to not get, not take ourselves too seriously. So I really like that, you know, I can be this, I can be a deep wise person and I can also watch myself do the same thing over again and say, oh, there I go. <laughs> that's me doing that same thing over again um you know and not get and again like eagle not get caught up in it or not have it take me down a spiral of what that says about me um so it really does have the ability to laugh um the other you know image if you if you have kids or if you've ever watched the lion king movie um i like the ref tiki character for this where he uh whacks the you know uh lion over the head to make him see something <laughs> kind of has that like he's you know this wise one of us that just um will give you the thump if you need it to make you see something it's also marked by presence so this the innocent image is you know for me the one of babies who can focus on their feet and be enthralled by them this part of us is deeply present so last time we were talking about our emotions and um, being okay with our emotions, the East of us brings the presence that we need to stay with difficult emotions. The East can bring presence to anything. You know, it's what it's our capacity to really show up in life. And the East can really do that. It's so present in difficulties, in great things. It's just, it's marked by presence. Um, it's connected to spirit. So this is an important one. This helps or it helps us connect to spirit, our East, which is why I say this can, you know, lead to bypassing if, if we're focused on um, all love and light. Uh, we're not having balance there, as we'll see in a few minutes, the West brings us balance. The, if we are just all about the love and light and being positive and um, we're not, that's not our East. This, it doesn't take us up and out of things like I said, but it does connect us to the oneness, to spirit, to that thing that's bigger than all of us. And this is not, um, this is not religion, like a lot, you know, I think for me, when I came out of all my church stuff, it's, it's hard to re, um, rework with this. But, you know, even the word religion doesn't mean what we think it means. It, it means, I wrote this down because I, um, let me just find it for you. Um, it means offering our attention to. So again, that presence piece of we are offering our attention to spirit in this part of us. We are doing things to connect with the that that which is bigger, um, the numinous, they would say. <clears throat> so, and I think it's important to say as we get older that we get to name what that is. So how do you connect with that which you feel is bigger than you? Um, that presence that is running through everything, the world that is as live as I am. How do I connect with that uh, in the world and in myself? That's what the East helps me do. So we get to name that for ourselves. Um, that's important. It's also our full presence sensing. So when you go into the forest, let's say, and you, this is a practice you could do, is you open up all of your senses. 
So maybe you, or maybe you practice with one, you close your eyes because you use those all the time and you open your ears and you just listen. This part of us is, is got all our senses on. So we can, you know, we can practice using different senses to drop into our East. So you might be really good at sight, maybe practice with your um, ears or smelling. Uh, but this one is really into, yeah, is connected with our senses. Um, let's see. So there's some other images kind of, you know, the image of the, um, in the tarot deck, the fool who steps off the edge of the cliff. It has that image of the, they're going off on the adventure. They're willing to take that risk and step out into the, um, the big wide world. I think that's our East, which knows how to, you know, just knows just enough to be <clears throat> adventurous, to be that sacred fool. Um, it also has this, the, our childlike self here. It's not childish, but it is childlike. So if you want to develop your East, you could also hang out with young kids who are very East. So I think that's kind of all I want to say about that. Um, and we're going to just move over here. So, um, so ways that you might deepen it if you feel like you're not very East, uh, really focusing on anything that cultivates your presence. So this could be meditation, a meditation practice. Um, this can be as simple as when you are eating, offering your food, your attention, you know, so use your senses. What do you notice when you are eating, chewing that? Sometimes we do that in, um, in, you know, kind of live things is invite you to eat a strawberry, really pay attention to what you notice about it, really take it in. It can be just as simple as that. I'm cultivating my ability to be present to something. I'm paying attention. I'm offering the world my attention all the time, which is strengthening, strengthening that muscle really. Um, so I might also develop my sense of humor. If I don't, if I feel like, gee, I don't laugh a lot, or I'm, um, you know, I really notice that about myself, I might want to make that a priority. What, what do I find funny? Um, and where is that for me? And how can I, how can I take myself less seriously in that also, and maybe um, be willing to laugh at myself? That's an important trait. And that often um, isn't something that, you know, we, we are able to do. So that's important to be able to, yeah, laugh at ourselves. You might build a relationship with a more than human other who really embodies these things. Like I said, for me, it's Eagle. Um, so I pay attention when I'm out there and I hear them. I offer them those senses, my visual. I have been gifted some beautiful Eagle feathers that I really treasure. So what, what would be your being that would speak to you of this capacity to be present and to be, to have a, this view of you and your whole life? I also think, you know, otter and their playfulness, uh, those kinds of, you know, or coyote for the, who's a trickster archetype. So how can you deepen into that for yourself? Get to know the beings that already are doing this. Raven, as some of you might be familiar with, is <laughs> not mentioning any names, uh, is, uh, you know, really is a trickster. So it's very East. So how do we um, let them teach us about that? and then connect with spirit. And again, how do you say you do that? And even, you know, Carl Jung with, uh, with all his, um, in his writings too, it said he found that people did need to connect with spirit in order to heal. Like it's still, even if we have all our wounding and we've um, walked away from things, there's still a piece of us that longs to connect with that, which is larger. So how do we do that? If we've unraveled the stories we were given, what's the new story that we we get to name for ourselves, uh, which is a part of maturing as adults? So how do you say you do that? Okay. That's what we're going to cover for the East. We're going to move to the West. I told you there was a lot we had to <laughs> get cover into this one. Um Okay, so the eat the also the way the map works is the north and south balance each other, uh, the east and west balance balance each other. So if the east takes us up into you know, I mean, I guess we could say enlightenment into those kind of states, to ecstatic states even, 
It takes us up to connect to oneness. The West takes us down and we need both. And this is where the, the church experience has been off. It's we have never had the down part and it was all about up. <clears throat> and that leads to not being balanced. So we have to go down and the West in us knows how to go down. So, and this is again, a part of us that is really undeveloped in our culture because we don't like darkness <laughs> and going down. And um, so, but it's in the myths, it's in lots of other stories that we can learn from. And so just to also say, if this part, if this one seems like, you know, not clear, that makes sense to me also when I first was doing this I couldn't even really talk about the west because it to me it was still feeling really elusive and again some people will find themselves really strong here and it will make a ton of sense so so just kind of hold that as okay that might be something I need to deepen into if it's something that doesn't make sense so the east is about our connection to oneness it makes us all we're all one we're all the same we're all you know part of the bigger story the west is about our uniqueness this is what makes me me this is the part of me that takes me to my unique soul so we can also talk about soul as that unique place that i occupy in the world my um this well i'll actually read you this quote um from a Jungian that i really love here so that describes soul so he says the psychological work lies in coming to terms with the ghosts of our unlived lives, not our grief for what we wanted and have missed for ourselves, not a laying to rest of adolescent ambitions. The mystery of the psyche is that we are haunted not by what we want out of life, by, but by what life wants out of us. We can never lay these unlived potentials to rest. Relentlessly, they seek to be lived out regardless of how deeply we bury them. That's from Stephen, Stephen, D. Stevenson Bond. So that's your soul. That which seeks to be lived into the world through you is your soul. And the West will take you in that direction towards uncovering what is unique about you that's longing to be lived into the world. So some other features on the West here is our deep imagination, which again, as when we were kids, we had, we could lose ourselves in our imagination. We could create entire worlds like that. And as adults, we often lose our ability to do that. But this part of us knows how to be deeply imaginative. And it's actually really important in our healing work because as we want to connect with our the things that are in the inner circle, we need to be able to use our imagination to do that. So this cultivating our ability to use it, to have this deep, um, fruitful imagination is important. So if we're not good at that, we just say, we just put that on our, okay, I'm, I could use some, that's a muscle I might need to exercise. <laughs> so deep imagination, if you're, if it's not familiar, we want to be able to use that. Like I said, it's our guide to soul this way. Um, and we'll maybe go a little bit more into that. One way, one way that you can really work with your West um, is working with your dreams. And again, something that we're not very good at. Um, so to, I love working with dreams. I have had my life changed by my own dreams. It is, it, it, they are coming from this place in you. Some, you know, Carl Jung thought it was from the collective unconscious of everybody. Um, but in any case, we have a a dream maker. Our dreams are unique to us. They are coming to us every night. You will spend the average of six years of your life dreaming. So it's a long time of your life to not pay attention to. It's not based on what you ate. Um, they are your own symbols and you get to deepen your connection to the West of you through these symbols. It's I mean, it is life-changing life work. So um, put dreams on your list of things to cultivate connection to if the West is elusive for you. The dreams will help you develop that. This is the place of our unconscious. So again, that which seeks to be lived into the world through us is largely unconscious. And it's in the West that, the, that we find access to that. Some of the, one of the archetypes is the psychopomp, which is the one that would carry people to the, across the river sticks to the, um, carry the dead. 
ferry the dead to where they need to go. So this part of us is uh, really okay with death and dying. So you can see why in our culture, we don't, we don't have this really um, strengthened or we don't like it <laughs> because this part of us is okay with things that need to let go. The season of the West, I should have said that in the East, it's the spring and the sunrise and the newness like that. In the West, it's fall and the shedding of leaves and the things that need to be let go of. This part of us totally knows how to do that. So if you're having trouble letting go uh, or, you know, having shedding things, ways of life, you know, there are ways of being that are have run their course, like the West will help you do that the west is really skilled at it so it knows how to um compost that's why i have a little picture of thing wormy pile there it has this um, ability to digest your life to make meaning out of it this is the place of us that makes meaning but first it takes it it eats it all up like it there's a digestive quality here um the west can really do that one word we use is, or one, two words, is the fruitful darkness. So it's not darkness for its own sake. It is the fruitful darkness. There is something so, you know, you can't have something new grow without something dying. The seed has to die in order for something to be sprouted. There's so much imagery that the West, you know, again, our deep imagination, the West uses the snake shedding its skin, the trees shedding their bark or their leaves the seed dying so something can grow that's all west this place is comfortable with unknowing it doesn't have to know it can live in the unknown and we tend to not be so great we want answers um, the west is fine with not having them um, like i said the unraveling composting um, if the south of us was an erotic connection to the world the West is the romantic connection to the world, like the poets and the just the yumminess of the West, you know. Um, and so some people are really strong in that. And again, you, it can go, uh, it can get unhealthy if you're also not balanced with East and oneness and right, you can get too carried into that. So that's why um, it's such a great model for there needs to be balance. There's both. So if you find yourself really strong in the West and you often get pulled into the, you know, the depths, you're going to want to balance that with some East. Otherwise, you'll find yourself um, into the fragmented part of that. So that's, you know, that's why it's great. It's just a great way to take stock of where are we? What's happening in my system? This The West offers a different perspective. It can be that... Um, you know, ability where you can get under something and see something from a different perspective. And you might even do that on a wander where you can get under, you can see how things, you know, you might look under the earth and see how things are coming along, you know. Um, this is, yeah, the places of roots, deep, uh, deep going down into the depths you might um, read about myths where this is happening the uh, one way to really strengthen this is through the work of myths there's so many myths about being abducted to the underworld um this is or even you know jesus being you know well actually we had a god that went up instead of down most of the myths have the 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 god figure who dies goes down is buried inanna she's in the underground and hung on a hook for three days there's there's these myths that go, yeah, when the dying happens, it's down. Um, so you can learn about that. You can read about Persephone who gets abducted to the underworld and is, you know, those are important things that can let us know about some of our own tasks, about being in the underworld. The West knows how to be there. Um, and the underworld can happen to us in, you know, often our midlife things that happen is when the soul is longing to be expressed through us and we you know it's bubbling up from this unconscious part of us and the the rest of us starts to panic because it's longing to be expressed into the world so um recognizing that that's happening it can even ha you know cause depression it can cause lots of symptoms actually uh, especially when we don't recognize what's happening so the West is, when that's on the scene, the West is digesting something and bringing, you know, wanting to bring something else up. 
So it's great to recognize that, that something's happening and it's worth paying attention to. Um, the other uh, <clears throat> archetypes that are used are the anima and the animus. And it's not as familiar of a concept unless you're in the Jungian world. Um, and so I'll just kind of go through them. And I, I wonder how it's changing with the gender conversations that are happening. And so I'll give you kind of the original, but I, 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 so these are the archetypes of everyone who's, if you identify with being male, you carry an inner feminine, the anima. If you identify with being a female, you carry an inner masculine image of the animus. Um, and so these are not male and female as you know, we know them, they're the archetypes of what is masculine, you know, sacred masculine, sacred feminine. And those, what's important about that is that those will show up in your dreams, actually, as usually unknown figures of the, of that opposite sex or some kind of, um, and they can be really erotic dreams, actually, which is what makes people freaked out when it's happening. But that can be that your own, this, the anima, the animus is longing to connect you with your own soul. There is actually a developing relationship with your own inner beloved that happens on the West. And that's a piece that we've lost, a lo we've lost in our culture. And so it can be very unfamiliar or un, you know, like, why would we do that? And what's important about that is if we don't develop that connection with our own inner beloved counterpart, we will project it onto other people. So this is where <clears throat> affairs happen or, you know, uh, or sometimes they say, you know, the, the classic uh, where a man is in another relationship, but the woman is like in her twenties, you know, those kind of dynamics. And in the, I remember reading from the youngians that they would say, you know, it's because that's the, that's probably the age of his inner feminine that hasn't, you know, isn't the mature version or, you know, so there is this, we will project it outwards. So that, that's what's important about this cultivating in the West is there's this connection we're meant to have with our own insides, with our own inner beloved, this um, way of really being in relationship with our own depths. And if we don't do that, we will ask someone else to carry it. So, and, you know, James Hollis would say, what are, what's one of those questions? Like, what are, what am I asking someone else to do for me that I need to do for myself? And that is when we're asking someone else, we're asking that other masculine or feminine person on the outside to do something that we are meant to be doing inside for ourselves. So there's a, a lot to unpack in that, but that is the idea of the anima and the animus. There is an inner beloved that we are meant to connect with. So it's, it's an interesting balance, isn't it? Like the East takes you up to spirit to connect with that oneness, the you know, the gods, the, the, this bigness, but the West takes you right into connecting with this uniqueness, but also with your own soul, your own inner beloved in that kind of dynamic. And it's a really beautiful, it can be characterized by longing and it, it just brings a different, um, it adds, uh, it adds depth to your life. It adds interest. It adds meaning. So it's really a beautiful um, place to cultivate also. Okay, so let's look at here. Oops, where's my little... I know we're gonna have questions about this. <laughs> so, we're good. so hold your questions. Um, so this is some of the ways you can deepen into the West of you. Again, pay attention to your dreams, but not just paying attention to them, uh, writing them down is important, creating us, uh, you know, inviting them, actually asking the dream maker to bring you dreams, um, but also work with them. So again, we don't need to, um, this isn't about analyzing, although that can sometimes be fun. It's also about building a relationship with this, your own inner symbols that are coming to you. So I've had, you know, dreams where um, snake has really factored importantly in my journey. So how do I build relationship with that unknown place in me, the, the snake of me, the one that longs to be expressed that way? How do I build relationship with that? Your symbols are going to be your own. How do you build relationship with that symbol that's coming to you? Um, that's important. So we, we can act them out. We can embody them. We can invite, you know, that there's a question with dreams where you ask, you know, who's visiting me? 
you can ask who's visiting me? Who is the magical other that's visiting me in my dreams? And how do I invite that, that one to just come through my day with me? Even if that one in your dream is a scary being that you think, oh my God, I, I do not want to know that. <laughs> um, you do. And so could you invite even that scary figure to journey with you through the day just to see what, what there is? So this, the dreams is a rich place to, culti- to access your unconscious and also potential. It's not just um, what we've put away in the, in the negative sense, but also those bigger, I mean, some of my bigger things that I needed to live into the world have come through my dreams. Mostly, I think that's actually where I get my, um, those edgy things for me. So there's, there is your, your potential that's also going to come to you in those places. So how do you say yes to it? How do you bring it into your waking world? How do you let that work on you and change you? That's uh, West. Like I said, read myths, immerse yourself. There's some great people, Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who's done some great work with the women who run with the wolves book, lots of myths you can choose in there. Um, I've done where I've worked with a myth for a year or more. One that I worked with for a while was the myth of the handless maiden, um, because I could really find myself in that story. So find a myth that really speaks to you and work with it for a while. See where you are in the journey of that one. What's your next task? The Jungian analysts are fantastic at that. So if you need to find, there's a podcast actually by, um, uh, it's called This Jungian Life. They go through, they just talk about that kind of stuff. And then they work with a dream at the end of every podcast. So that might appeal to you. Um, deepen into that kind of world. It is it is crazy. Some of my favorites, uh, James Hollis is one of my favorites. He just came out with a new book. <laughs> uh Marion Woodman there's just there's so many great ones so if you want to deepen into that kind of depth psychology those are the people to do it with and they have written some amazing um I would say that's probably what cracked me open in my journey like nothing else so um you know one of the other practices is to write your own story as a myth which I have done uh, many times through different seasons of my life I have written my myth as if I was the handless maiden and told my own story, but through that, through how the myth unfolded for her, put myself in there. Um, so you can use a myth that you're already familiar with, but in, but infuse it with your life and your characters. Um, that's a great way. And then you'll notice as you grow that that myth no longer applies and it's time for a new one. It's That's an invitation our whole life to restory ourselves, to really look at what is ending. And like, again, the West of us knows how to end and how to begin. So what is ending? What is beginning? That's a question I can always ask myself. And I can find, you know, ones to help me do that. Okay, how do I end? And how do I end with integrity? How do I compost this? How do I make meaning out of it? How do I let this um, dissolve? Those are, that's, that is West. Uh, one of the reasons we read poetry is it's very West. And I didn't even, um, I hadn't read poetry probably since I was forced to do it in high school. <laughs> and I now, I love it. I mean, the, it's so great. So I have another poem coming up that we're going to read. But so read poetry. If you don't, if you're like, I don't get it, keep doing it. Um, take the risk and write your own poetry. That's really West. Um, one of the archetypes we didn't really talk about, but is the muse. Connect with your own muse. You can invite it. Um, some so James Hollis, one of my favorite Jungian analysts. He after he would say after a day of working with clients, he writes, and people say to him, "Writing must be really easy for you." And he he says it's actually not, but he is in service to his own muse, to his own soul. This is how he feels like um, life. This is what he feels is trying to be expressed from through him in this lifetime, and so he's committed to it. And so he does that. And so I think sometimes it's not that um, it's going to come easy to us, but because we are in service to our soul at, at a certain point, hopefully that's true. We become an, an ego in service to our larger story, to our soul, and then we serve it. And it's, you know, yeah, requires a bit. So 
you could attend, you know, write poetry if that really um, inspires you or do something to connect with your muse. Um, again, cultivate your ability to die and to give birth to the never before seen. That is the invitation of the West. Something dies, you know, and they, the other phrase that your new life will cost you your old one is really true. And, and the West of us is totally good with that. So if we need help, ask for, you know, ask for the West. Um, I need some perspective here, a new perspective on something's dying and I'm having a hard time. So we can ask. Go for a walk as the sun is going down. Befriend the dark is a practice we often use in Animus where we are um, befriending the dark. And it can take a bit because the dark, you know, again, we're, we're so used to being, we'd rather be in the light. So we can strengthen that by becoming more comfortable with actual darkness, being in the dark. So use that as a practice. And then, yeah, again, the anima animus, courting our own inner beloved. What would that look like? It would look like any other relationship where you wanted to get to know somebody. You know, um, I've shared my, I'll show you, I've shared my, on some, in some platforms, but my, um, this is what I'm using to do that for myself is this bowl that I've recently found made of Arbutus tree, which Arbutus to me is she sheds her bark. She's really good at letting go every, right now she's doing it. She's outgrown this year's skin and she's shedding it. And it's a, just a practice for her. So this bowl I found uh, handmade, made out of Arbutus. So already it's Westy for me because she's my symbol there um, as well as snake. And so I am finding ways to offer to my own life, to my own inner beloved things that um, I feel like should go in here. And it's just a practice. I'm, I don't know what will happen. I haven't done it before. I'm, I'm just seeing, I'm curious about it. I think West is also very curious. We don't, I'm in the unknown. I don't know, but I feel like I want to court my own insides. And so I'm doing that in this way that's come to me. So what might you do to leave offerings for your own insides? I mean, they could be tears or poetry or longings or words or um, dreams. Could be anything, but what what could you do to cultivate access to that inner world? And then, of course, depth psychology. So, yeah, look at the at the youngians. They are masters at it. Okay, here is our poet poem for this: to go into the dark with a light is to know the light to go to know the dark go dark without sight and find that the dark too blooms and sings and is traveled by dark feet and dark wings wendell berry okay so we've covered in a fast way our the outside of our circle <laughs> um Again, it's not about perfection, it's about wholeness. So we are being curious about where we need to grow. And we're being curious about where we're already doing this and we just don't know it. Again, where are you offering perspectives to other people about big pictures that you just don't add to your own journey? Where are you already um, embodied and you don't realize it? Where is your muse operating and you just haven't maybe realized it? Your own creativity. Um, you know, so let's, so we just want to be curious about it. That's what's the beauty of a map. We can find ourselves somewhere and then we can go, okay, I know, I know where I want to go. What territory do I want to go to and how, what do I need to do to do it? So I, here's some things I just kind of gathering from the map. This is what I feel like, you know, there's a, um, you know, when we're in our whole self, there's a feeling to it. There's a, there's a way to know um, that becomes more clear as we do it. So when you're in your wholeness, you are in your healthy, wise adult. You have a big picture view. You are connected to spirit and oneness. You are present, turning toward your life. And I mean the whole thing. <laughs> you are you are facing, you are willing to face your whole life and who you are. Um, and what you've done, also part of it. We are embodied at home with our emotions, and I mean all of them. We are in love with the world around us as a full-bodied lover of life. 
we are connected to the earth itself, to each other, to ourselves. We are living in our wild self. We are just as wild as any being on the planet. That's not our crazy self. That's our healthy, wild, um, just like the wild world self. We're connected to our deep imagination. We're living our soul into the world. We become a, a human being in service to our soul. That's important. Um, we are okay with the undoing of the things that are dying so something else can be born. We're open-hearted. We're willing to be, you know, to take in more, not less. And I I feel like that's really important, especially as as we age, because the I think often what we see is a lot of not openness. As we age, we become less flexible, less open, less, you know, we just are hunkering down um, and more stuck in our ways, or this is who I am. And our whole self is more, is, you know, like that East of us that like those young kid ideas is where we're just our, we're actually becoming more open, which means we're going to feel more things. That does mean there's more pain. There's more, you know, we're, we're going to feel the intensity of more things. Thank God. <laughs> That's the invitation. Um, as we open, you know, as my own, as we talked about earlier, as my own heart opens, I'm invited to feel more. That's what my parts have been avoiding on my behalf. But my whole self is like, yes, let's feel it. So we're connected to all the seas. We, we're experiencing them. We're compassionate to ourselves and others. We're courageous. We're connected. We're calm. We're creative, curious, and clear. And we have choice about how we show up in the world. Okay, it's my last, how do we do this? So let's open it for any questions you have um, about all of them, if you want, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> anything that doesn't make sense, anything, um, or any area that you feel like, oh, I've, I definitely want to grow in that area, or here's where I see myself thriving um yeah i mean well i just have a practical thing to ask at first yeah and that is um I, was, I missed session two when you sent me the recording and i watched it yesterday it was very helpful and then i realized how i wish i'd had a recording of session one and that i wish i had a recording of each of the sessions because sometimes it's good to go back and look again. Okay. Or or the other option is I'd love to have your slides. <laughs> oh. Oh, because I wonder. Okay. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there because uh, part of my struggle with, with Plotkin's book is there is so much there and it gets all very I in my mind it gets all very convoluted sometimes and I'm not and you're you're both your your speaking and of course your slides are much clearer. And I'm madly making notes here. Uh, and that's good, but I would, wouldn't mind having a way to look at them again or having yeah. them, whatever, so. If I can figure out how to send you the slides, <laughs> I just have to preface it with a, then I will. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, I got it. Yeah, I, it. I think yeah. I can. So if I, if I can do that, I will. Otherwise, but for sure, I can give you all of the, um, uh, the the videos. I, I didn't do a great job with my list making ahead of time. So I got, I confused myself around who wants what. <laughs> huh. you send so, all the I'm okay. going to have to miss several more sessions. That said, so I know I want it then, but I, I realized I would love, anyway, seeing okay. the video really helped me. So Okay. Me. I will do that. Yeah. I'm going to tell Bill one to be like this is you need to clear it up bill <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know there's a lot in the book so um there's a lot yeah well part of it is though i will say also thank you that i think actually i went back and looked at a couple of things uh, in the book and i think it would the the, the slides could be really helpful because they i could actually see them and look at the book at the same time and sort of begin to uh, get a linkage going on here. Oh, uh, great! So I, yeah. I, I I I don't know that yet, but I'm I'm thinking that might work. So yeah, 
And, you know, the more times you hear something, it does, like we were talking about earlier, There, I really think there is that, you know, you create a hook in your brain for something. And then right. the more times you read it, you have a place, your brain goes, I know where to put that and puts right. it in that spot and it starts to build and then you, you get it. So, right. um, yeah. So I, I mean, I have been in doing wild mind work for 12 years. So I, um, so it took me a long, also a long time <laughs> to, to some, and again, like some of that, it's like the West was like, I don't, I don't know, um, <laughs> but I had to have my own experiences with that. So it, it also has worked me this model and yeah so i'm and i'm hoping to make it so that you can have some actual tools so that you can okay. um do it because the important i i did actually have said that to bill the only our our you know the model is only as good as our ability to use it like otherwise who cares right that's right. that's nice but if if we're not actually doing it then uh, who cares? And well, sorry, and that, that is very much what I'm experiencing, especially with you're talking about the West today. Much to my surprise, that is a place that I'm pretty familiar. Yes, great. Yeah. And I thought, oh my, <laughs> um, because I'm a I love darkness, and I've been writing about darkness and and other things, and I write poetry, and anyway, whatever. Oh, so I don't need, I don't need to go on about it, but yeah, but and I don't know how I got there yet. <laughs> That's really yeah. great. It's great to recognize because it also yeah. tells you where you might need more work in the, you know, you might need more work in the East because yeah. that's, yeah, that balances so. it. Yeah. So that's great to recognize. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Anyone else with some thoughts? Yes. Um, I, when I read through Bill's book, um, I devoured it. And so I read through it twice and I did struggle like Robin did with, because it was so deep, so deep. And in my imagination, I put the four directions in like a, a life of a seed. I'm a gardener. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm always thinking about planting and seeds. And so when I think of East, it's the time of germination of new growth. So I struggled with that concept of the overseeing, how it, it can oversee because it's like the plant is still baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, and, and when I think of summer, it's the plant is fruiting and, and then it can see more but it's in the West where it can reflect back to its growth that it can see more as it enters and goes down into the darkness and produces the fruit and the seeds fall to the ground in the autumn. Mm -hmm. And then they get buried where they go to the North to the winter where they're nurtured and the swelling comes and then spring comes in it, the new seeds can burst forth. So I'm struggling with the concept of over, it it can see over. Yes. Okay. Well, how about let's say this. You that's beautiful. I love that you've done that. And I forgot to mention the East is all about paradox. The East oh, is okay. so, so and yeah. so if you just add that, then you've got it. Yeah. Yes. I should have yeah, put that on my sides. Add that to your slides, Robin. That's supposed to be in there. <laughs> it's a paradox. But yes, oh, yeah, I can see that. Ends. Yeah, so yeah. right because you have the newness and you have the wisdom. Right. So you have the old in there. Yeah. So, and somehow, and yeah, it's paradox. It doesn't make sense. And we we struggle to move to that in our black and white thinking often, right? Like in our, what what we there's we've had so much black and white, the East is, yeah, cracks that wide open yeah so yes add paradox and you have then you have a complete image i'm thinking right yes um, yeah yeah that's beautiful and the trickster is so in the early plant life yes yeah yes and and the newness and the right that's a great image for that um mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay and whatever makes it real for you 
is, you know, what you want. You want to take it and make it your own. Because again, what, whatever, if it's not working to, to actually change us as human beings and take us to our soul, then who cares? And if we aren't then becoming generative and making, you know, living our bigger stories, then I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, any other, is that complete for you? Yeah, it helps a whole lot. Yes. And I'm, I, I'm so appreciative of your stories. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. And breaking it down more. Yeah, whatever I can. Yeah, for the ways I've had, I've used it, whatever can help make it seem more of a, you know, an actual tangible way of doing this. That's, um, yeah, and I would say it, it, um, it did take me a long time to you know, we, I think at the, at the beginning, we find ourselves back and forth in that circle a lot where we are, you know, in our whole self, but then we're hijacked into the center before we even know we're in there. Um, and then I think the more that we do it, the more that we work with that, the less the hijacking happens, uh, especially the unconscious hijacking where all of a sudden we wake up a few days later and realize we're so far in our wounded child that we we didn't know uh, I think that happens less but um it does it takes a bit it's a working model we want to uh work it I was gonna say um it's very interesting because before this I was so focused on my parts you know that's where all of my attention was going now as we're understanding more of the wholeness um you know i'm starting to be able to focus more attention on that now but there's such swings because how do you incorporate all four quadrants you know it's like i can focus on the north okay now i can focus on the south like is there a point where it all begins to kind of meld together you know mm -hmm. i think so um, I mean, there's some practices we could do, like, I like the four direction circle for helping me do that. But when I call in, when I call in or up my directions, I don't, I just do it. You could do it faster. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So I don't think it's as separate as the map originally, you know, makes it seem because yeah, eventually we're working as one coherent kind of pool we hope hopefully yeah, yeah. Hopefully. so that's the goal <laughs> yeah, exactly and I did when I first started I thought I should we should I should teach it from the perspective of the inside of the circle because everyone real resonates to that right like if you start with the the dysfunctional side everyone's like I got I have one of those but but Bill's focus really is on wholeness that we need to cultivate access to the whole self and some of that inside stuff can take care of itself with that um, and so I've started, yeah, I think it took me a bit to realize, yeah, we need to build that container first. We need to, that focusing on wholeness is important. So to start with that and yeah, it can be a little bit, people don't recognize it, but once they start to, mm -hmm. uh, then that's the piece of just even asking that question. Am I in my whole self or am I in my parts right now? Mm -hmm. How do I know? Well, now I have some things I can say, does this feel am I in my body? Am I with, you know, am I avoiding my feel? Right. Like you have a, you have a list you can go through. <laughs> and for me, I think it helps generate some of that courage because I can look at my parts from a more whole perspective. And so I can come in with that instead of, you know, feeling lost in my parts. So this has been very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, you can't heal from inside that circle. Um, you can't. So you have to be on the outside, but at least when you're inside and you know it, then you can do what you need to do. Do you need to call someone to help you get out of the inside? Can you do it yourself? Can you, can you then access some of your whole self by reminding yourself what it is, uh, you know, and then doing some practices to shift it. You can, that can really happen. You can really do that. And sometimes you need to get help. That's true too. Sometimes you have to borrow your wholeness from someone else who's in theirs. That's true. So um, I've had to do that myself. So, and I would still, if I got stuck in the inside, I would absolutely um, get my help, get help to be on the outside. But the beauty is I would recognize it most likely.
anyone else? We're kind of at the end, but does anyone have any quick thoughts? I really appreciate every, yeah, go for it, Norm. One question just in regard, with regard to the trickster. I don't quite understand the trickster um, on the, as a positive side of it. <clears throat> yeah. So trickster for me is that energy that helps you see something you weren't willing to see. You know, like it can trick me into having an aha moment, something I can't unsee. Got it. So it has that. that. Does that make, yeah. Does that make sense? It's not, so it's not the mean, it's not something, you know, it's not like that kind of trickster of um, okay. meanness. It's like, it's tricking me into seeing a, a larger something. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask you a quick one too? And that is, I, you said it, I know, but fruitful darkness? Yes. What is, what is how are you? What are, what are you saying there? So I guess, what so when you're strong in the West, for instance, if you are just stuck in the darkness, that's not it, <laughs> right? So and that can be kind of a, wait, I'm going to need some East to help myself here. But the fruitful darkness is that it's a life, death, life cycle. Death is always in service to life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So if there's not life coming, next you know if if the season of the seed didn't continue that we'd have a problem right right so we're not actually wanting everything to just die and then stay there right right so that can help discern am i in the fragmented part of the west or am i in the whole west it's a fruitful darkness it does lead somewhere yeah okay. Good. i always think about it in terms of when i'm walking in the woods um there's always fruitful darkness because Maybe in the daylight, but underneath the logs that are on the ground, there's a heck of a lot of fruitful darkness going on down there. Yes, something's happening. The composting is right. It's doing. It's doing something. Right. There's a purpose. And the West is all about meaning. Like it can take you to that place of meaning. So these things can happen, and the dying can happen. But the West yeah. will be like, it will have this deeper, the living a life of meaning. That's West. It has the capacity to totally make sense out of things and bring that. Uh, here's why that happened. Oh, that's, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah. So I really appreciate all of you and your interest in your own whole self. And um, yeah, I hope you have a lovely time deepening into your four directions and Next time we will start uh, with the North. We'll go into our sub personalities. So that's also fun. <laughs> so, uh, and how to work with them. And I'll do a little, bring in a little <laughs> IFS info also, because they've got, he, that model is really great for working with the inside of that circle. Um, and so I do feel like it does a better job with wounded children than the wild mind model does. And so we'll add some of that. But um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone joining me. Thank you. Thank you. You Thank are you, welcome. Becky. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Have a Thank great you. rest of your day. You're welcome. You. Thank you. Too.